Okay, Matt Patella here, and it's been a while since I made a video uh, with this particular camera, so I'm just, I, I felt I needed to make this video because I've been watching a few videos recently with some information I don't agree with. So I'm going to give you my take on um, sticking positions, sticking heights, and uh, some things I'm not certain about. Maybe uh, whoever is viewing the video can help me. Uh, what I need to do is uh, develop a platform first. What I'd like to say is let's talk about sticking uh, heights. We have this sticking height, which is the full stroke position. Okay? Let me, uh, yeah, that's the full stroke position. What, what this is, it's a, for a power stroke or a loud volume. The next one is, and this is about 18 inches off the drum surface. The next one is the half stroke or the half stroke position, which is half the full stroke. And the quarter stroke. So we have the full stroke, the half stroke, and the quarter stroke. Now, that's sticking heights or sticking positions. Sometimes, and, and even to this day, I get confused and, you know, I just like to keep the language intact, like this is a full stroke. And a lot of people say this is the free stroke position. I guess you could say that, but things get a little confusing. I'm in the full stroke position here. When I make impact on my drum, okay, uh, I'm executing a stroke. It's called a free stroke. So there's the difference between the full stroke and the free stroke. This is the position. This is the execution. Now, the reason, one of the reasons why I'm making this video is I saw this, that the full stroke is when you come down, you stop, and then you lift the stick. I, I, I don't know what that is. I don't lift the stick. What I uh, was taught, without the stick, for example, my stick is housing, my hand is housing the stick. My hand is what controls the stick, okay? I don't throw the stick down and lift the stick and say that is a free stroke. It's like, for example, if you had a sponge ball or a tennis ball and you threw the ball up against the wall, the ball is going to come back. Well, that's exactly the same principle as what a free stroke is. I throw the stick down and the stick's going to rebound and come back. Now, the only thing that's stopping me from, or stopping the stick from going over my head or over my shoulders is my hand. I stop my hand at a certain position. I throw the stick down and I follow the stick. I do not lift the stick. I throw the stick and follow it. So therefore, my hand has to be faster than the stick. Watch. My hand is back here to receive the rebound. I throw it down as a rebound like that. So, I mean, that's uh, kind of ridiculous. The stick can go flying. So, I make an established point. And that point is here. That is called a, uh, that's the full stroke position, but when I execute, it's a free stroke. Okay? I do not throw the stick down and lift it back up. It's going with the rebound, and my hand is back here to receive that stick. That is called a free stroke. Okay? One thing I've been noticing as well, and uh, this is what, what I'm a little confused about. I see a lot of drummers demonstrating what they call the, the free stroke, and they throw the stick down, and they bring their finger out and grab it like this. I don't know what that is. What's the purpose of something like that? For me, what I think about that, and what it is, first of all, you want to be totally relaxed when you play. I throw the stick down, I follow it back. I do not grab the stick, tighten the stick, or bring it back. When I go like this, when I see guys go like this and then bring their fingers back, that's an unnecessary movement. What that movement does is create tension. I am using an, a, a muscle here to bring my fingers back, which is unnecessary. My fingers are in a position. This is how I hold the drumstick. Okay, this is right now it's called a German position. I throw the stick down. I follow it back with my hand, of course. There's no tension. I have to have a bit of a grip because I need to control the stick. 
I have it, the grip that I have is not uh, it's tension free it's not tight I'm not choking the sound I'm not uh, preventing the sound of the drum with the stick hitting the drum for the sound to go outward all right when I hold it tight if I go like this and hold it real tight the shock of, of, of the stick that goes up my arm and that's going to create a problem and those pro problems rather and those problems are carpal tunnel syndrome and tendonitis now I'm demonstrating right now a, a free stroke now that's a volume stroke the only time I stop and the only thing that's going to stop that drumstick is my hand my hand is what controls that stick I throw the stick down I stop it here when I stop it, I don't grab it, I don't squeeze it, I let the sound go out. I just stop it. Again, that's my free stroke, nice and relaxed. My hand is faster than the drumstick. Okay, now, the other one is a control stroke, it's a down stroke. It's not a throw down, it's a down stroke. I throw it down, my stick is about 180 degrees. Okay. Now, that's two strokes we just went, we did the free stroke and the down stroke. And notice that the free stroke and down stroke are of the same volume because the distance is the same. Free stroke, down stroke. No tension whatsoever. Now, this is an up, or tap rather, and this really uh, puts the, the, uh, the whole thing in perspective here. If I'm here, there's a rebound. I'm receiving the rebound. Here, I can't throw the stick down and lift. It's a tap. All I do is from this point, just throw the stick down. I'm accepting the rebound. That is a down, a, a tap rather. The next motion is an upstroke. What I do from this point is I hit the drum from the tapping position and come back to my say wherever I want. If I want to remain here or if I want to want to rather go to the back to the full stroke position I come back and that's the full stroke position not the free stroke the free stroke is execution so this is a tap okay and it's not a throw up <laughs> it's an upstroke so we need to get the language we need we need to make we all need to get on the same plate here we you know the zone is, is like People are getting all confused because somebody's calling this a throw up as opposed to, and that's a disgusting term anyway. It's a upstroke. Okay, so let me go over that again. This is the free stroke. Now, I do not lift the free stroke. I follow it back. My hand is there to receive the rebound and stop the stick from going over my shoulders. It's like, like I said, you throw the ball up against the wall. What happens to the ball? She comes back to you. You're there to catch it. Prevent it from passing you. It's the same concept. Free stroke. I mean, yeah, it's the uh, free stroke, the down stroke. I prevent the stick from going up. I stopped it, but I maintain the same sound. Next stroke is a tap. Next stroke is an upstroke. Simple. That is the stroking positions or the level system. Control strokes, aka control strokes. Uh, free stroke, down stroke, tap, and upstroke. Now, here's a good example of lifting the drumstick. Why you? Why would you lift the drumstick when there's a rebound? If I'm playing eighth notes, one and two and three and four, I'm not lifting that. I'm dribbling it like a basketball. I'm relying on on the rebound. So if I was to go here, and I'm saying I'm lifting, that is absurd. And I'm still trying to figure out why somebody would throw the stick down and, and give me a free stroke, a full, yeah, free stroke, and put their fingers out like this. That doesn't make any sense. That's an additional movement that's totally unnecessary and will disrupt the flow of what you're trying to do. And that's going to create a uh, you're using muscles you don't need to use. It's just... Now, the level system, there's a whole spectrum of levels here. I'm establishing this as the extreme. The free stroke, the down stroke, the tap, and the upstroke. 
if I'm playing the vamp and I want to get an accent, I'm in one position. I'm taking it down so I maintain one sound. From this particular point, okay, if I want to put an accent, so I'm just doing eighth notes, one and two and three and four and, and I want to accent the counts of one, two, three, four, well something has to occur here. There has to be a motion coming up at a different distance and coming down to that same distance. Watch. One, and, two, and, three, and. It's down, up, down, up. It's not throw down, throw up, throw down, throw up. It's just one, two, three, four. I want to nail the accent. I want two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Am I forcing it? I'm not pounding it, I'm not whipping it. Now you can call it whatever you want. You can call it the molar, you can call that a whip, you can call it a pump, whatever you want to call it. But what in reality what it is, is the laws of physics. I'm accepting a rebound. I throw the stick down, there's a, for every action there's an opposite reaction. That's my, I throw it down and she's going to come back to a certain point. The only thing that's controlling that stick from stopping at that certain point is my hand. My hand controls the drumstick. It's not this. I don't know where that comes from and why drummers do that. It is totally unnecessary. Now there's other uh, approaches and techniques out there. The uh, push pull. I don't. I don't really have time to deal with that. I don't. I don't really practice that. And it's a really good technique, but. What I, the reason, like I said, the reason why I am making this video is because I see a lot of this. Somebody saying they throw it down and they bring it back. They lift it. There's no lift there. There's a rebound. If it's a full, a free stroke, you throw it, the stick down. It's not. A, you can say throw it up. It's a down. It's a down stroke, and it comes back to the starting position. And my hand stops it. My hand is faster than the drumstick. The rebound. It has to be to accept it. Now there's that distance. See that? And there's a whole spectrum inside of here of different sounds. A friend of mine, Jeffrey Johnson, made uh, wrote a book on the level system. He did a magnificent job of explaining all of this. And this does not exist. And I don't know why. There's a lot of drummers that do that. And I would like to know, if possible, when you're viewing this video, Okay, is to explain that to me, please, because it's totally unnecessary going like that. It's an additional movement that's totally unnecessary and can disrupt the sound that you're trying to obtain. Consistent sound. My sound is consistent. And I'm coming down from the wrist, like so. And my hand is faster than the drumstick. Simple. So again, you have the the free stroke, the down stroke, the tap, and the up stroke. That's it. And everything's around that. Not this. And I don't lift the stick unless I'm here and I want to get, I don't use, the, I don't waste the motion unless I want to get an accent. I come up inside of time. so forth. I just needed to put this out there because I've been getting, uh, it, it's, it, it really gets to me when, when somebody is making a video and there might be great drummers or, or whatever, but there's a technique here. And the technique does not change because someone else is doing the same video or explaining the same concept. The concept is what it is. It's the laws of physics. Nothing else. You can call it Stone, you can call it Moly, you can call it Adler, which I, by the way, the Adler system is this. Seesaw. And it's the illusion when you're playing this that that exists, but it's not. It's totally relaxed. It's totally tension free. You have to be, ten you have to have no tension whatsoever. Any tension that you have, you're going to create injury, and we want to avoid that. So, I'd like to have some feedback, if possible. And um, I had to get this one off my chest. Thank you, gentlemen.